Hi, this is your Sapnil Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's See. And today we have with us once again Dave Birmingham, Senior Technical Evangelist at Cyrus Technology. Dave, today we are going to do a demo of, of failover and failback kind of generic patch management. Uh, before we deep dive into this demo, just quickly uh, give a summary of what exactly we are going to see today. Yeah, I'm going to show you LifeKeeper for Linux, which is Cyrus Technologies high availability clustering solution. And in this particular cluster, we're protecting a um, Postgres um, SQL database running in AWS. And like you said, we're going to show a switchover, which is generally used for planned maintenance as part of the rolling update process. So we'll show you how to uh, minimize your downtime associated with updates. And then we're going to show demonstrate some, some of the features of LifeKeeper, including local recovery and automated failover in the event of a, like a system level crash or something like that. You have two main problems today. We're going to be looking at ensuring that your Postgres database stays online. So even though we're running this particular database in AWS Cloud, it's still incumbent upon the user to ensure that you have redundancies built into the system. So what we're doing is we have two AWS instances running in two different availability zones. And then Cyos has a Cyos Data Keeper, which is a replication engine, which is keeping that database in sync between the two availability zones, leveraging just regular EBS volumes attached to each of these instances. And then Data Keeper is doing synchronous block level replication. So if AWS is having a bad day and the entire um, availability zone goes offline, or if just your particular instance is having a problem, whether it's you know a physical server problem or some software level problem, you can automatically recover to a secondary server in an entirely different availability zone. So that gives you your high availability. And then the other thing is we're hearing more and more often that people uh, want to keep up to date with patches. They don't want to let their systems go unpatched for an extended period of time because you hear about the zero day attacks and you know exploiting unpatched systems. So you wanna be able to patch quickly but you, you, you know, generally, if you have a single system, that requires some amount of downtime. It could be um, you know, minutes or hours of downtime to apply a patch. And by doing what we call rolling update, we allow you to patch the standby system. So apply your patch without having any downtime. And then through the interface, quickly switch over to that standby system and verify that the patch hasn't broken anything. So you wanna make sure that your application is running uh, as expected after the patch is applied. And then assuming that yeah, everything is fine, then apply the patch to the other server. And at that point, you've had just a minimal amount of downtime with just the amount of time it took for this, this service to switch over. And so now you can apply patches on a much more regular basis without scheduling a bunch of downtime. So those are the, the two main use cases we're going to talk about today. Excellent. Now it's time for us to jump right into the demo. So in today's demonstration, we're going to show you how you can use a cluster, a high availability cluster, to do a few different things. So beyond the traditional role of a, of a fill of a cluster to provide high availability to assure business critical applications can survive unexpected failures, a high availability fill of a cluster can also help to minimize the downtime associated with applying updates to your servers. So we could do that through something called a rolling update where in a cluster configuration, you can apply updates to the standby server without impacting the availability of your application. And then once those updates are applied, you can switch over to that standby server and then apply the updates to the, um, the original server that was running. And so by doing that, you minimize the downtime associated with applying updates for just the small amount of time it takes to move the application from one server to the other. And 
This concept really applies to any sort of failover or cluster. And today I'm going to demonstrate the Sios LifeKeeper failover cluster solution. Uh, in this particular case, we're protecting Postgres running on Linux. So I'm going to walk through the LifeKeeper solution, give you an overview of what it does. Then I'm going to show you how we can uh, you know, protect from system level failures, application level failures, as well as how we can ass uh, assist with the, uh, the maintenance of uh, eliminating the downtime associated with the plan maintenance. So let's start here at the LifeKeeper web management console. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk through what we're looking at. Uh, so this is the interface. And like I, I mentioned, we're protecting a Postgres database running on in a cluster between two nodes. The node names are LKWMC Demo 1 and LKWMC Demo 2. And so um, down the left-hand side is what we have, uh, we call our resource hierarchy. And so this is basically all of the resources that are that make up this particular cluster. So if we look at this resource hierarchy, we have a Route 53 resource. So Route 53 is an AWS concept, and these particular cluster nodes are running in AWS. So this is controlling the client redirection by updating the Route 53 um, so that our clients can reconnect after a fillover. Um, that's associated with a, a virtual IP address, which we have next. And then the actual Postgres resource is, um, is next in the list here. And then below the Postgres resource, we have a file system resource and then the data replication resource. So in this particular cluster, again, these are um, two nodes running in AWS. These nodes are located in different availability zones in the same region within AWS. So instead of using some shared storage, we're, being, we're allowing you to stretch the uh, cluster across um, geographic locations, in this case, availability zones, but really would work the same in any environment where your cluster nodes uh, might not be connected to shared storage. So in that case, we have the Data Keeper replication solution that would do the block level replication to keep the data in sync between the cluster nodes. You probably notice there's a relationship uh, between these resources, we can expand and contract different resources to give you a different view. But this relationship really determines the order of how things come offline and uh, come online. So in this case, the Route 53 is what we call the parent resource. And then below that, we have the, the virtual IP and the Postgres resource. And then below Postgres, we have the file system. And below the file system, we have the data keeper resource. So as we'll see in some of the uh, examples here, when we switch over um, for the plan maintenance, we'll stop the parent resource first, followed by these two child resources of the virtual IP and the Postgres. And then once Postgres stops, we'll bring the file system offline. And then finally, with the data keeper resource, we'll switch the mirror direction. So when things start coming online in demo two, um, that process will reverse the mirror direction. So all the writes will occur to the storage attached to um, demo two and will be replicated back to demo one. All of these resources have uh, properties that we can look at. We can edit the properties. We look at the, um, this is the data keeper resource. We can um, do some things like pause the mirror. We can look at the current replication direction. Uh, we're going from demo one to demo two. This particular mirror is doing synchronous replication and uh, we have some compression and um, you know other uh, other things we look at in the properties here but each of the um, each of the different resources have different properties that we can um, look at and edit and manipulate so let's um, go ahead and start with the the first um, thing we want to talk about today is plan maintenance so in this case we um, like we said the uh, lk wmc demo 2 is offline so what if we want to apply some updates to postgres uh, we can simply apply the updates on lk uh, wmc demo 2 uh, without impacting production so let's go ahead and and do that all right, we're going to check to see uh, what what do we uh, if there are any updates available for Postgres uh, SQL. So we'll check to see if there's some updates, and we see that there are some updates. So it wants to update um, 13.20, 13.21, 13.22, 13.23, 13.24, 13.25, 13.26, 13.27, 13.28, 13.29, 13.30, 13.31, 13.32, 13.33, 13.34, 13.35
we're currently running um let's check to see what we're running so we're currently running 13.8 uh, so again this is on uh the the passive node so if we want to go ahead and run those updates we could do that and uh, run those updates so we're going to um run update command now i'm not actually going to um this is just going to be a test i'm not going to actually apply this update but if we were to apply the update it would look something like this where we're upgrading the postgres and uh, it would run again without impacting the production server so once the update's complete then we can um you know check to verify the update was complete and so forth and then when we're ready to um, apply the update to the um, to LK dem, uh, WMC demo one, what we would do is in the LifeKeeper interface, we would come over here and tell it to come in service on demo two. So we'll go ahead and kick that off. And what's going to happen in the background is that all the resources we mentioned uh, earlier, the Route 53, the virtual IP, this Postgres, the file system and the data keeper resource will come offline on the active node and then they'll start coming online on demo two so once that process completes everything will be um, online on demo two and then we'll be able to um, apply the update to demo one now before we apply the update to demo one we probably want to have a little bit of runtime on demo two to make sure that the update didn't break anything, right? So um, if for some reason the update broke, uh, you know, broke the application and you needed to roll back, you could simply switch the, um, the cluster roll back to demo one, which has not been updated yet, and then start, you know, diagnosing what, what happened, you know, what went wrong with that update. Uh, before you decide to try the update again so you can do all that without um you know with very minimal downtime okay so we see that everything has uh, come online on demo 2 so we'll close that and at this point now we could apply the updates to uh, demo 1 So that is how we um, minimize the downtime associated with planned updates. Now to do, um, you know, like I said earlier, a, cl a cluster can also um, protect against unexpected failures. So there are two types of typical failures, right? There's a whole system level failure where a server just goes offline. And, uh, but there's also other failures where it could be an application level failure where an application might be having difficulty for whatever reason. And a, a, a fail of a cluster solution like LifeKeeper will detect both types of failures. So to detect a system level failure, we have a, a heartbeat mechanism that is going between the, all the nodes in this cluster. So in this particular case, between demo one and demo two. And um, if the heartbeats stop from one of the nodes, the other node will uh, take some sort of recovery action, right? So in this particular case, with things running on demo two right now, we, um, if I were to power off demo two, which I'm gonna do in a second, demo one will detect that failure and we'll initiate recovery on demo one. So let me go ahead and shut down uh, demo two, simulating a power failure, and then we'll um, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I have stopped demo two. So in a moment, demo one will detect that failure as we see here. And after a timeout period, it will begin the recovery process to bring those resources online on demo one. Um, now, how long it waits depends on um, your particular configuration. So when we when we set this cluster up, 
we configured what's called a communication path, which is, uh, you know, the, the path that the heartbeats go across. It's just right across the TCP network. And there's two parameters. There's how often do we send a heartbeat? And then we also uh, have a, you know, a, a parameter that it says, how many heartbeats can I miss before I determine that the server is actually offline? So we might send a heartbeat every, you know, two or three seconds and then after you know a few missed heartbeats you can recover and you could tune that to you know to the optimal setting for your particular environment to meet your recovery time objectives okay so we see that everything has recovered on demo one so again, that demonstrated a system level failure with a, a catastrophic failure of demo two. Now, finally, I wanna show you that um, beyond the system level failures, we can detect and recover application level failures as well. So as I mentioned, in this case, we are protecting uh, Postgres, which is currently running on demo one. Now, each of these resources have intelligence to, that um, enables it to uh, monitor the health of that resource. So if that resource is having a problem, then um, what we'll do first is initiate what we call local recovery. So we'll try to fix that problem locally without causing failover if we can. Uh, if that local recovery fails, then that would trigger a failover to the other server. So in this particular case, I'm simply going to uh, connect to demo one and I'm gonna kill the Postgres process and watch um, LifeKeeper detect that failure and recover from that failure. So let's jump to um, demo one here and uh, do that. So we are connected to demo one and I'm going to show you that we have Postgres running. So let's see, um, show you here. All right, Postgres is running. We're going to kill the Pro Postgres uh, process next. Kill Postgres and then confirm that we see Postgres is not running. So once LifeKeeper detects that Postgres is offline, it will um, do its local recovery and start that process back up. So let's give it a moment here and then we'll check again to see if that process is running. Okay, so we see that Postgres is now once again running. So that demonstrates a local recovery. So like I said, if we can fix that process locally, we will do that. Um, that's the quickest recovery option. If that local recovery can't fix the problem, that would initiate a failover of the entire resource hierarchy. And, and that really uh, covers the demonstration for today of LifeKeeper. To recap, we took a look at the LifeKeeper uh, web management console uh, of how it, you know, how it works. And then we did a, um, a system level failure, or we did a, we did a switch over first um, with the plan maintenance update on uh, LK demo two, and then it did a, a manual switch over. And then we did a hard failure of demo two to show a system level failure back to demo one. And then we did an application level failure and local recovery by killing the Postgres uh, process and uh, watching LifeKeeper detect that failure and bring it back online. Dave, thank you so much for joining me today and uh, give us this demo. Thanks for, you know, of course, great insights in addition as well. And I look forward to chat with you again. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you for having me.